everyone. I've decided to make a small video about my process of photographing the International Space Station because I've posted a couple of pictures on social media, you know, Facebook groups and Instagram, and I've had people asking, you know, like, how did you find it? How did you track it? And that kind of stuff. So I thought making a video would actually be a lot easier than just a giant wall of text every time. So if you are following this, I'm going to assume that you have these three things. One is a telescope that you can push with your hands. I'm tracking it manually. I know that there are certain programs that you can use to have your Skywatcher mount, for example, um, track it. But I don't even know if that's possible to do. Like, I don't, I don't even know if you can use Ascom for this one. So um, I do it manually, and I just like push the telescope with my hands. So you need to make sure that you can release both clutches on your mount. I know that some of the single fork mounts, um, you can move it this way, but then you can't undo this clutch, which is gonna be no good for you. So yeah, you're gonna need to have a mount where you can push it with your hands in both directions. The second thing, I'm just gonna assume that your telescope is really well collimated. You're gonna need that. And then the third thing, is a planetary camera. This is the one I use. The reason I prefer these is because I can set them to shoot continuously rather than, you know, like with the DSLR, I found it really awkward to be like clicking at the right time. So um, I'm using this one. It's a ZWO ASI. That sounds very different in my head. <laughs> I turn weirdly German. But um, it's the ASI 662MC. It's one of the fairly newer ones. Um, you, can, you can use pretty much any one of these as long as it's really fast. And um, uh, obviously, you're just going to need a UV and infrared cut filter at the front. Or you can use a near infrared filter for them. But um, I like a little bit of color, so I'm just going to use a UV and infrared cut. So yeah, one of these and a telescope that you can push around in both directions. So I've set up here this evening because I have an International Space Station pass at half past 10 this evening at my location, which is in South England. I find the best way to find out when you have a good chance of photographing the ISS um, is just to go to their official website. It's called spotthestation.com. And if you put in your email into their newsletter, they will email you ahead of every pass that is above your specific location. And the emails, they contain everything that you need, like the exact time, exact degrees, um, exact highest altitude. And then if you have a weather app called Clear Outside by First Light Optics, um, they also have a function of showing you when the International Space Station passes are. They show you each and every one, so even if it's like 14 degrees above horizon, they will mark it as, oh, you have a space station pass. You want to be looking at those that are above 50 degrees, really, because if they are too low, you'll just be looking through a whole bunch of atmosphere. You're not going to be getting good shots. So what they have is, you have to click it twice, what they have is they also give you the magnitude of the pass, um, and the magnitude varies, like sometimes it's brighter, sometimes it's not as bright, so that might be a factor in how you decide to um, adjust your settings on the camera. So now I've set up the telescope, it's cooling down, and I'm just waiting for the sky to get a little bit darker so we can see an actual star, because that's all we're going to need to prepare. And by the way, this is my first time ever making a video like this. So if I'm being really awkward, I'm sorry. Right, so it has finally gotten dark enough. I have Regulus right there. Um, and I'm just going to use one star line. So literally minimum effort. I'm just going to make sure that my finder scope um, is really, really well aligned because that is where I'm actually going to be tracking. So one star align on Regulus until it pops down here on the screen. So now I have the star exactly in the center of my capture screen, and it corresponds with it being exactly in the center of the crosshair. And one of the reasons I do this, apart from just getting as many shots with it in the capture screen as possible, is because I found that if I just try and track it continuously and move the telescope a lot to keep it in the center, I get very blurry pictures. So what I do is I move it incrementally and then try and let the space station pass through the center of the crosshair as many times as possible.
So now the next thing to do is focus. If you have the moon, you can use the moon to focus on. Um, but in the like last two years that I've been doing this, I have never had an International Space Station pass with the moon there to focus on. So I'm using a Bakhtinov mask. This is one from William Optics. It's, it's really great. And I have now stepped on it twice <laughs> and broke it, but it still works. So I'm going to put that in front of my telescope. So I can see the star spikes now on the screen. I have upped my exposure and gained way, way up because it's still not dark enough. But you can see the spikes now. It's pretty close to focus. I'm going to adjust it as best I can. And then I am just before the pass, I'm going to give it another final check just in case as the temperature drops, it changes. Right, so now we are getting really, really close to the time of the pass. I've checked on one of those like generic AR uh, star map apps exactly where it's going to be rising. So I know where to point when the time comes. Usually they give you a time of like it starts at 2235, but you're not going to get a really good chance to see it until about two, three minutes later. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just keep it going on the star, make sure that I have my focus in check. And then when I see the space station, I'm going to be tracking it through here, through the finder scope, and I'm going to try and make sure that it passes through the center of the finder scope as many times as possible. It's just like small incremental movements, trying to get it like as many times to appear in the capture screen. And now I'm going to do my settings. So in this picture, I had my exposure set to 0 0.24, which is way too much. So this evening, I'm going to try 0 0.18. And I usually set my gain to 420 on this camera. It's going to be something completely different on your camera if you have a different one. So you're just going to have to trial and error it. So it is now 22.33. It's two minutes before the pass. And this is my time marker to turn the telescope off, remove all the cables that might snag. So I'm going to turn off my view control, um, turn off the handset, remove everything so I'm free to move around and push the telescope. This is now the capture screen as I'm tracking. As you can see, I'm trying to have the telescope still while the ISS passes through to get the images as sharp as possible. This is just what I found that works best for me. Right, well, there you have it. Uh, hopefully we have at least one usable frame or this is going to be really embarrassing. So now I'm going to put my recording into PIP, Planetary Imaging Preprocessor. I recommend just using the ISS option here and let it do its thing. It's going to comb through all of the frames and find the ones that have the ISS in it. And then output is TIFF, so it's going to output it as single files, which you can then stack if you have enough good ones or ones that are around the similar time frame, right? Moment of truth. Hooray. See? There we go. Not too bad. Right, I hope this was helpful. I hope it was clear. Um, I really recommend trying it, even though it's mildly stressful but it is really thrilling. And I remember when I was doing it for the very first time with my like phone and a tiny telescope, even just getting the outline of the ISS, I was so proud of myself. So if you follow this and you manage to get a picture, can you just do me a favor and like tag me either on Facebook or Instagram or, or here and show it to me because I'd really love to see it. And um, yeah, clear skies, everyone. Thank you.